Chuck Glass, Sunday, 8.50 ITV. ITV's state-of-the-art coverage of election 2001 begins in just under the hour at 5 to 10. First, some lighter moments in politics. All general elections have their own special character. <laughs> Welcoming to this house, Mr. Dennis Norden. Thank you. And hello. And it can't have escaped your notice that ever since 7 a.m. this morning, the nation's been indulging in that form of legalized gambling known as a general election. <laughs> All day long, something over 43 million of us took time off work to vote. About 26 million of us did, and now, <laughs> with the polls almost closed and local party HQs up and down the country sending out to their nearest chicken takeaway for more wishbones, <laughs> ITV has conscripted us to help fill up this uneasy interim period, the demilitarized zone in which both Mr. Blair and Mr. Haig can only sit about wondering what the night will bring. <laughs> will it be a house in Downing Street or just a place on any questions? <laughs> so, to help allay some of that prime ministerial tension, here with a few typical head of government moments. So far as the national situation is concerned, I think I wouldn't go further than to say the results are moderately encouraging. Well, do you feel like a prime minister? Quite honestly, I feel like a dream. <laughs> She's a very fine candidate, I'm sure. She's going to make a very good member of Parliament. And of course... Oi! And uh, the next thing you're going to do is to knock the government down. It is up to the representatives of governments and peoples to work to free humanity. Peacemaking requires foresightedness. For far sightedness is a quality needed in all peacemakers. Non seulement parce qu'elle a trompé le peuple en 1995, mais parce qu'elle ne sait pas quel positionnement adopter dans cette campagne. Elle n'ose pas assumer son bilan. Elle n'ose pas dire quelle serait sa politique si elle était renouvelée au pouvoir. I do so, we'll declare the premises formally open. Ah! <laughs> no? I'm trying to do one. I'm trying to do one. We'll do it in the hall, yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll do it. Come on, There you go. partisan support for it in Congress, and it meets the principles I set out in my State of the Union. If they send me the bill in its present form, 
I will sign it. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> Tell me. Are you still here? <laughs> Do you reckon that last one was staged? <laughs> Actually, it was, for the benefit of an all-powerful group that we'll be returning to later, the media. But next up, well, politics may have been dubbed the art of the possible, but judging from that persuasive bunch who've been all over our screens these past few weeks, it's also the art of the plausible. But fortunately for this kind of survey, though, there have been occasions when even the most silver-tongued of parliamentarians have come down with eloquence failure. <laughs> See, a rail authority which will have a priority of looking out. That's all crap. Can we start it again? <laughs> there are two major promises he has not been able to keep, and those are the promises to put more Americans back to work, and the second promise is the promise to... Um... <laughs> what is that second promise? <laughs> The two other things we really need to do, though, to make sure we win that... Uh, uh, that uh, <laughs> the second type are the people that really don't understand, that don't appreciate the wonderful benefits and the enrichments bilingual brings. So that's why we, in any case, intend producing in September a booklet explaining how valuable and enriching bilingualism is and how fluently a, ch a child can come to become, how fluent, how quickly he can become bilingual. But particularly, we're upset because the ministry has apparently reversed its position and is uh, uh, tending to change its philosophy, uh, turning to uh, uh, institutionalized... Uh, uh, f oh, God. <laughs> Word about the president. For seven and a half years, I've worked alongside him, and I'm proud to have been his partner. And we've had triumphs. We've made some mistakes. We've had some sex setbacks. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like the. Uh... Jackie, what does that mean to you? What are you going to do to try and sort this one out? Well, traditionally, people talk about the four C's as being the main barriers for women. Cash, culture, child care. And what the hell's the fourth? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the new Prime Minister of India? Uh, the new Prime Minister of India is... Uh, uh, no. <laughs> don't, don't push me too hard on, the inf on this information. I'm not, not certain of what I'm talking about. Uh, as, uh, as my all-time favourite MP, Alan Herbert, once wrote, if nobody said anything unless he knew what he was talking about, a ghastly hush would descend on the world. <laughs> now, something guaranteed to empty any room within seconds is the line, there now follows a party political broadcast. <laughs> But although, like many people, I place about as much credence in them as I do in professional wrestling, <laughs> looking back over a three-hour collection of them that we harvested, there were a few cherishable moments. We've made a lot of mistakes, and I've no doubt we shall make a lot more. <laughs> I've got it. I like it. And with your help, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I hope this doesn't sound priggish, but... Um... You know, we didn't join the Labour Party because we hated our fellow men. We joined it because we loved them. <laughs> I said to me, it's 18, 19, you're going to be a politician. I said, no, get it. <laughs> anything else, anything but being a politician. Why, on what grounds? Why? Because oh, I thought politicians were complete pains in the backside. <laughs> <laughs> we've always had a sense of humour, and heaven knows we've needed it lately. <laughs> Lord Rupert Shuffington Crag, sir. Rupert! Uh, <laughs> Brandon Soda? Oh, good God, no, it's too early in the day. <laughs> For soda. Sit down, sit down. Uh, now, as 
don't call. Your problem is the little matter of your death. <laughs> How to leave the entire county and associated businesses to Lord Rupert the Younger without those nasty little tax men getting involved? Any ideas? <laughs> Can't see a problem, Rupert. Just bundle up the capital gains tax and the inheritance tax into one parcel and you get double tax relief. Uh, you just leave it all to me. Just leave it all to us. Double tax relief? I, 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 I don't believe it. Just, just imagine. <laughs> Seems to have died. Smart move. Yes. <laughs> After all, don't want to wait until those Labour people get in. <laughs> <laughs> And in that party political broadcast, you had Stephen Fry and Robin Bailey taking the politics out of politics. <laughs> or taking the something out of politics. <laughs> During a long ago David Frost election night programme, a veteran MP said to me, these general elections would be a doddle if it weren't for the bloody electorate. <laughs> and in fact, we found instances where politicians who were seeking to befriend the voting public were left with not just egg on their faces, but on occasion, an entire English breakfast. <laughs> Quite satisfying to watch, though. It will never happen if Tony Blair wins the next election because he wants to abolish the pound. And I say we mustn't let him abolish the pound. Keep the pound? Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the pound. Very well. Here, of course, <laughs> is really what it's all about. It's about our kids in our schools' education. If we say we're going to cut the class sizes and over a quarter of a third of them Excuse are me. now over 30... Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 We've got to just to say about the children. It's somebody else got some of the jazz. <laughs> Sam, we're coming to you on the pavement in Leeds now. Now, Leeds is at present on its way to work, and not many people have time to stop even to give a view. Uh, in Leeds being a working city, it's extremely difficult to... Uh, uh, grab anyone to give an opinion. Would you mind uh, giving an impression? <laughs> what about you? you? Yes, I beg your pardon. And now back to Richard Dimbleby and London. What's the matter? Haven't we shaved or something? <laughs> who, do you, who, who do you think's at fault? What's the problem here with the strike? I don't even know, really. I, I haven't got the foggiest I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know, really. What is it? I don't know. What, what is this? I don't know. I know somebody's striking for something. Somebody down there striking, too. I'm going to get me a sign to protest the... Pro I don't know. What is it they believe? I don't know. Let me clear these people away. <laughs> They're all voters, Joe. <laughs> say you shouldn't appear with animals. I am now going to introduce a private member, Bill. Here is my Bill. I'm about to remove his private member. <laughs> no, I've got an OMC and I can't get a job in this city. Oh, so don't come round with your conservative rubbish round here. It's the one you can't get a job if you're not polite to people. Is it sharp, then? Apart from me, obviously. <laughs> Uh, of course, the, the, the ever-smiling Mr. Blair, reputedly the only pupil in his nursery school who campaigned to be milk monitor. Well, <laughs> seeing we're soon to be overtaken by a commercial break, let me quickly put paid to one quite damnable allegation of political sleaze. It is simply not true that certain members of Parliament receive regular payments from outtake programmes, what's known as cash for cock-ups. <laughs> Hand on heart, the various indignities and humiliations suffered by this next group of MPs were all incurred in the line of duty. Morning. And we both signed the declaration on the other. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yes, Ed, what do you want? Yes, you're right. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Over the coming days, the nation will decide. McDonald's new Cadbury's Caramel McFlurry or McDonald's new Bounty McFlurry. With delicious Cadbury's chocolate and caramel sauce swirled into thick dairy ice cream, new Cadbury's Caramel McFlurry really is the only sensible choice for this country. Yes, and at just 99p, it puts a penny in your pocket for every pound you spend. Elect new Cadbury's Caramel McFlurry today at your local McDonald's. She says to feel special, you have to look special. And to look special, you have to feel special. So now she's got Johnson's pH 5.5 moisturizing shower gel with natural oils free from Kellogg's Special K. Does that make her feel specially special? Good morning. Now tell me who's late, you or me? All right, mate. You're all right. Take care. Yeah. What's it to be, the water or the bridge? Water! Water it is. Chicago Town Deep Dish Pizzas. These guys are so versatile. You can cook them in the oven or in the microwave in just three minutes. And because they're individual, you can have them as a snack on the run or as a main meal. With fries, jack of potatoes, salad, beans, ice cream, apple, celery, walnuts, grapes, bananas. Are you tempted? Are you Go a little thin on top? The Chicago Town Pizza isn't. Its unique base means the filling stays deep and dishy right to the edge. Chicago Town Pizza, America's best-selling frozen pizza. All right, what pizza thing gonna chuck us here? Steak that. What's happening? And that, and that. What is wrong with you? And that. Orbit now in new sweet mint pellets. If you're a locksmith, get some security. If you're a chef, prepare yourself. If you're a researcher, do some research. If you're an actor, act now. Stakeholder pensions from Norwich Union. Together we're stronger. What makes you, you? It's those key moments. Wow. They shape your life. Mom. They are your one-to-ones. You'll travel a million miles for them. Don't even... Thank you. You'd love to listen in on some. Some people wish they could have more. The amazing thing is, you never know when your next one-to-one -one will happen. Sandy. S-A-N-D-Y. Or where it might lead. Okay, it's okay. Who are you? You're every one-to-one you've ever had. Thank you, Mr. Oldman. Thank you.
in 30 minutes. Join us for ITV election 2001. The key results live here on ITV. We're in our custom-built two-tiered set to bring you the excitement and the surprises of the big political story. An historical night ahead at 5 to 10. Help! I need somebody! Help! Not just anybody! Help. What do you think about this election business? Very good. Great, isn't it? Yeah. Good stuff, this election stuff. It's all right if you win. Do you think it's harder being a politician than being a pop star? Yes, definitely. Probably, yes. very much so. Has he I've never been a politician, though. <laughs> Who is the one person you'd most like to meet, and why? I believe it would be Ronald and Nancy Reagan. And why is that? Being in the limelight that, like they are, I just would like to find out how they keep their personal relationship going. Um, as, as a husband and wife, how do they really do it? Oh, look out, Daryl! What's all this 59 stands up, David? No, I'm going to determine to get rid of them. Well, she's wonderful. I think she's marvellous. Yeah. I really do, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's I think it. she did a good job in Northern Ireland, you know. Yeah, you know. And yeah. that's yeah. enough. Right. That's OK, enough, yeah. thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. No, Bye-bye. Yeah. Won't, won't, they won't show that. <laughs> the welfare of the American people and the jobs. Yes, ma'am, right here is lady. Do you have a question? No, she. Yes, right here. Second row, next to the guy in the blue shirt, holding her left hand up. It's a he, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I thank you all. <laughs> As that work has finished, the Central Reserve safety fencing will go ahead. <laughs> what are you working on now here in the White House floral room itself? I'm working on an arrangement for the President's office, Mr. Lawrence. Now, what are you using in it? Well, we have uh, white stock, roses, of course, and heather. And right now we're using a lot of Christmas greens and holly, balsam fir, pine. Daisies, majestic marguerite daisies, sweet peas. Lily, Saturday night. A Conservative councillor at Waltham Forest has been accused of neglecting her constituency duties because she's moved to Glasgow. Jane Costello says she still hopes to serve her ward by commuting from Scotland whenever possible. But opposition... <laughs> you know, I just can't see why he found commuting from Glasgow to Waltham Forest so ludicrous. I mean, if it had been from... Hendon Central to Moorgate. <laughs> Understandable. Anyway, welcome back. And as we've almost finished with that noisy event the British hold every four or five years to determine which of the opinion polls came closest, let's move to a bunch of party bloopers to whom we haven't yet paid our disrespects. From deep in the archives, some self-advertisements by a few of the more colourful political groupings. The first an ingenious attention-getter from that green lot. For years now, sewage has been dumped into the sea. And our poisonous waste, which is too dangerous on land, is burnt at sea. Particles from the waste end up in the water, affecting the tiny organisms which are the base of the food chain. In the end, this affects seals, <laughs> dolphins, and the Natural Law Party will establish a group of 7,000 experts in transcendental meditation and yogic flying. When a person practices transcendental meditation and yogic flying, a high degree of integration is produced in vain. The person experiences bubbling bliss and stress is dissolved. This is the basis of many practical results in every area of life. Justice! We require justice! Destroy society! 
society, the oppressive society. Unity is beautiful. Unity is beautiful. Can you get my bags, please? <laughs> We're not a one issue party, but a potential party of government ready and willing to fight for as long as it takes to establish a free British democracy, trading freely with the world at large, founded on the rule of law, with a parliament fully accountable to the British people and to the British people alone. Thank you, Dr. Sked. I, for one, was most impressed. <laughs> There were just um, a few qualifiers for the Olympic oddball team. Well, <laughs> having dealt with the ways in which politicians have had their self-esteem punctured, let's turn to the even more ego-bruising world of political reporters and to head their catalogue of work-related injuries, this just in. As I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by being thrown into the fountains at Trafalgar Square. <laughs> it's been a great night for aquatic sports here in Trafalgar Square. <laughs> there I was, standing quite innocently by the fountain, trying to bring you the latest news in the great debate, when some rude youths picked me up, suddenly flung me in, and I got rather drenched. Unfortunately, I didn't even have the credit of being on the air at the time. <laughs> what gives Korshakov a degree of credibility is that for years he was the keeper of Russia's dirtiest secrets. As head of the Kremlin Guard, he systematically bugged and spied on Boris Yeltsin's senior aides. And he just ran over my foot. And I'm told that Moultrie County today voted for Jim Thompson. So chew on that. From the highest, this is Joel Dale. Joel, I must say that the idiot behind you is hardly a very pleasant reflection on Governor Thompson. Well, he has nothing to do with Thompson. It's just that this is, the, this is this time of night. This is what's happening in this room. There have been a lot of drinks consumed. A lot of people are just here to be on television and to be exhibitionists. And it's probably the only diversion that's going to happen here tonight. Well, you can tell him I think he's a jerk. I'll tell him. <laughs> You're a jerk. <laughs> So, Tony Blair's speech and policies were today's topic for this group of six formers, but what questions would they have themselves for the Labour leader? Well, we're giving them the opportunity to put their points... Oh, bugger. <laughs> You're trying to draw conclusions that are incorrect and way off mark. I mean, <clears throat> way off mark, and I reject it totally, and you can finish the interview now and get out. I'm not um, trying to say there's anything illegal happened whatsoever, but what I am... And what I am saying. Now, come on. That enough. Why is that? Because I reject, I don't like it. Now get out. <laughs> no reaction, sir? No, I don't like you to accuse the corruption you're talking about. I'm not talking about corruption. I'm, no. not, I'm not alleging. Oh, off you go. I'm not alleging oh, any illegality. Go. I'm not alleging any illegality whatsoever. Off you go. <laughs> off, I don't care about deceptions. Come on, out. You've been ordered out. Office, all right? Now get out. Now get out, and I mean get out. <laughs> this is what it's like being on the campaign trail with the Prime Minister in 1983. It's as far removed from traditional campaigning as it's possible to imagine. There aren't many voters in sight, but there are hundreds of members of the media who swarm around the Prime Minister, follow her every move, and the idea from the Conservatives' point of view is to get the best possible exposure on the TV news that evening. The majority of the people are confused over Proposition 14. If you're one of those, we advise that you read up on the initiative before going to the poll in November. Remember, if you're for the initiative, you're against the Rumford Fair Housing Bill. If you're against the initiative, you're for the Rumford Fair Housing Bill. Now, we'll try that again. If you're against the initiative, you're against the... If you're for the... Ini if you're for the initiative, you're against... Now, other news from around Europe. The British Foreign Secretary, Malcolm Rifkin, has been in Paris today. He saw President Chirac, and afterwards he said that there were... Oh, you stupid little... Well, uh, 
I, uh, I sincerely hope all you lip readers out there enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> but for some political reporters, the damage can be totally self-inflicted, as in the case of this American newsman, who suddenly found that one word in his report had turned itself into a kind of linguistic cul-de-sac. Facilitate was what he was trying to say. And when I say trying, it was pitiful. <laughs> Incumbent politicians want to look as official as possible during an election year. It helps them to keep their job. And the flood of the last several days has certainly facilitated. <laughs> facilitated. Three, two, one. <laughs> and you're wiggling the camera. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. Incumbent politicians want to look as official as possible during an election year. It helps them to keep their job, and the flood of the last several days has certainly facilitated. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing on tape? I don't know. Three, two, one. Incumbent politicians want to look as official as possible during an election year. It helps them to keep their job, and the flood of the last several days has certainly facilitated. <laughs> Facilitated. Hang on, stop. Facilitated that. Here, I'll hold it out here. Facilitated is the word, okay? This will help me to get it right. Thank you very much. Facilitated that. Just hold it right like that. That's fine. No, you can hold it just like that. Facil facilitated. Incumbent politicians want to look as official as possible during an election year. It helps them to keep their job, and the flood of the last several days has certainly facilitated. <laughs> Incumbent politicians want to look as official as possible during an election year. It helps them to keep their job, and the flood of the last several days has certainly facilitated. <laughs> Three, two, one. The common politicians want to look as official as possible during an election year. It helps them to keep their job, and the flood of the last several days has certainly helped them out. <laughs> well, that, that was, um... I was met a guy named James Kiersner. Now living in a country cottage, he's named Dunn Reporting. <laughs> well, according to legend, when one of France's most respected political columnists was asked, if you could do an interview with anyone, living or dead, who would you choose? He thought for a moment and he said, the living one. <laughs> now, mind you, recalling some of the political interviews that we've sorted through, that might have been the wrong choice. <laughs> what do you think of him compared to what you see on the telly? I think he's better looking. <laughs> Not better looking, but he's tiny. I would rather, I would rather Mondale won it than, than Regan. Why? Well, Regan is a hard man to believe. Mm -hmm. he you has... think he's too old? Some people say he's too old. Well, he might be sterile, but I wouldn't think that that's his name for me. Well, Mike, uh, are you glad to be uh, back in Northern Ireland? I've never left, John. <laughs> what do you think of the two-party system? You mean two parties in the same house? <laughs> I think that it's a strange idea. What's the face of Labour that you want to present in this campaign? Not one with soul soap, I would obviously. <laughs> but one that's a caring party, social justice. It's those traditional values, you know, we're con concerned about education, health, um... <laughs> Minister, why aren't you getting home to women? <laughs> where does the Labour Party stand on breasts? I think that we will we regard that as a matter of privacy between consenting adults. This is the official Liberal Party policy on breasts. It's a conscience vote. Are you a breast or a leg? I'm a retired I'm retired from both. <laughs> Sorry, I'm listening. Come on, Come on to the microphone from the face. How are Good you? To see you. Great, I'm great. excellent. Leah McClay, are you a breast or a leg man? Obviously a leg man. Oh Ellis, are you a breast or a leg man? Uh, breast. <laughs> what is the Labour Party policy on breasts? 
We're for them. <laughs> I'm to a lake man. No, I'm a racing man. We're always backsides and legs. <laughs> oh, this is, I can't speak. This, this is dirty talk. And conducting those Australian interviews, the subtle artistry of Mark Warren. <laughs> well, another commercial break coming at us now, after which we'll have some of the most highly respected figures in British politics. But please, come back anyway. <laughs> Meantime, here's living proof that in today's world, a politician must not only be expert in such matters as social welfare, the Euro, the NHS, and integrated transport systems. He must also be an all-round entertainer, able to sing, dance, tell jokes, and in Mr. Heath's case, give a side-splitting impersonation of a foreign person. Je suis convaincu que nous vivons un moment historique, a comparable à celui de la Vantan. Land of chattering classes, no more pageantry. Darlings, raise your glasses to brave modernity. Uh, a lady was introducing me and she was fumbling with my curriculum vitae. And she said, um, I just want to tell you all about Mr. Portillo's biological details. And realising she'd got that wrong, she said, oh, no, no, I'm so sorry, I, I meant, I just want to tell you about all the positions that Mr. Portillo has been in. <laughs> the Labour's party's right, or you're out of sight. It was my napkin cold face. <laughs> oh, I can't Damn. hold him. When I fall in love. Oh, no, no. Hold very tight, please. In Islington, some time he passed and adopted all the manners of the chattering class. He drank white wine and he acted cool and he sent his son to an opt-out school. Don't just sit there. You could save up to 20% on motor insurance. Buy online at directline.com or pick up the phone now. Lance Barton may have died. This is heaven. But he won't take it lying down. I want a body now. Now. Mr. Wellington. I've got a body. Better recognize. He's coming back to live the high life. Chris Rock. Give me your wow. Down to earth. Are you sure I won't die for 40 years? Technically, yes. But have you got the zest for summer? <coughs> At last, those dim and dismal winter days are well and truly over. Actamel from Danone is a great way to start the new season. It contains 10 billion El Casai Immunitas cultures. Natural goodness from the inside. Every morning for all the family. A delicious way to begin the day. Actamel, also in zesty orange. Mm, they're none. Conventional washing machines have only one drum. Your clothes go round and round. The new Dyson machine has two drums that turn in opposite directions at the same time, so your clothes move in a totally different way. 
This two drum wash action is more efficient and twice as fast at releasing dirt from your cottons. And of course, with two drums, the Dyson will even wash a king size duvet. The new Dyson washing machine. Two drum, not humdrum. The hair that's bound to get you noticed. Well, a Vivality, the new hair care range that strengthens and vitalizes your hair. Vivality, beautiful hair, full of life. New finish Powerball 3-in-1 with built-in salt action, detergent and rinse agent for dazzling results. The UK's first 3-in-1 tabs. Even if they invent a longer, more flexible toilet brush, you'll never reach germs where they most like to lurk. That's why Toilet Duck has invented new active tablets. They kill germs and actively attack lime scale below the waterline, leaving your toilet brilliantly clean without scrubbing. New Toilet Duck active tablets, the easy way to clean your loo. Now you can try AOL for absolutely nothing. Just call 0800 376 4444 for your completely free trial pack. <laughs> Taste from Sainsbury's and Carlton. Food to inspire you on TV and the web. Just 10 minutes, it's ITV election 2001. Watch with us the story as it unfolds. The excitement, the key results, live. Dermot Murnahan's graphics will give you all the information you'll need. You won't miss a thing. We start at 5 to 10. How long does it look like going on, do you think? That's a question that really ought to be put to Mr. McGregor. He started it. I so just wish somebody it. would shoot you. That's Mrs. McGregor. <laughs> Tony, well, we've been inseparable <laughs> for very many years. In fact, I think Tony without Dennis is like Torville without Dean. <laughs> For his doctors and his signature on a piece of legislation, President Ronald Reagan is alive and well and kicking tonight, one day after the assassination attempt, just two and a half months into his pregnancy. Brigadier Clark has been Portsmouth West's MP for the past 15 years. Tonight went down with all guns firing. I am going to say something bloody controversial now. I'm not only sorry for the citizens of Portsmouth, but I'm sorry for our country. Brigadier, Brigadier Clark, that was, once heard complaining about the politics of the left luggage office. Well, it was back in 1957 that the radio comedian Fred Allen described television as the triumph of technology over people. And since then, of course, we've seen advances in TV technology he couldn't even have dreamt about. And how have they affected TV's reporting of politics? Well, as this next section shows, one thing they've taught everybody concerned is that middle-aged men are not the only ones who have to worry about equipment failure. <laughs> Leadership, of course, as well as the majority of the membership of Republicans were of like mind. I think that uh, the president had... Keep, keep, keep inside, right? <laughs> yeah, keep inside. <laughs> Hang on, let me see if they switch. Governor Keating, if, if you can hear me, we've, we've got a bit of a technical uh, problem here. I, I see some gentlemen I don't recognize all of them. Sí, como no. Estamos haciendo una prueba de la voz. ¿Cómo está el nivel de la voz? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but for the quality of economic advice that comes to the government from the Treasury, from my own department, from the business departments, and, uh, you know, I find it hard that somebody would write down even his own department in that way. So you, you, would, you would dispute... Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> in Wellington, we have the National Party chair. I, I tell a lie, he's not standing by in Wellington. He's standing by in Tekuiti, the Prime Minister's uh, place of residence. We have the National Party chairman, Jeff Thompson. Mr. Thompson? No, we don't. He's still being made up, as you can see there. We're showing you all our secrets. I believe that Congressman Ron Coleman is ready to join us. Apparently, the vote has ended. Cynthia? I'm not Coleman. <laughs> now, there's a moment of truth. You could ask Mr. Hasseltine to uh, turn on the lights. Deputy Prime Minister, please will you light us up? Well, as the song has it, when the lights go on in London. Three, two, one. one. It's uh, the night that Michael Heseltine got his special award for outstanding achievement in the field of total darkness. <laughs> well, these days, a question of grave concern to politicians of all parties is what can we do to make parliamentary debates more interesting to young people? Well, one answer may be to emulate the way parliaments in other parts of the world conduct them. <laughs> Идет голосование. Будьте внимательны. Коллеги, кто без карточек? Либо не успел проголосовать? Прошу вас. I uh, like to have seen anyone try that on Betty Boothroyd. <laughs> He just sent him flying right up into the strangers' gallery. But that almost closes our contribution to this general election. A, a campaign that's been, according to the way you look at it, either a glorious exercise in participatory democracy or just another slanging match between Tweedledum and Tweedledummer. <laughs> As for all the MPs that we've skewered tonight, well, they must have a sense of humour. Why else would they refer to each other as my honourable friend, <laughs> the honourable member? For... Anyway, into our final compilation then, and as promised, it features that caring and sensitive section of our society, the media. Good night. <laughs> well, I hope good luck. Uh, careful, guys. Don't injure yourselves. We wouldn't want anything to happen to the media. <laughs> Was it an error to resign, Mr. Anderson? Yeah, sure. Any comments at all? Sure. Mr. Anderson, was it a mistake to resign? <laughs> <laughs> Was there much discussion at the board no, about no, Salt no, Lake no, look at Dee, where are you? <laughs> Can you come and save me? <laughs> Can we have a quick word right here? And this is all due to you, because coming from my statement yesterday in the United Nations, and if you looked at the press reports, one could see that what you were writing 
was that today's meeting with President Bill Clinton was going to be a disaster. Так вот, в первый раз я вам говорю, что вы провалились. Well, now for the first time I can tell you that you're a disaster. Well, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, some embarrassing moments for our presenters. It shouldn't happen to a newsreader. You're watching Carlton, now ITV Election 2001, presented by Jonathan Dimbleby.